What's up guys? Welcome back for some more fun in Space Engineers. Today we'll be talking about gears. So I've been playing around with these for a little while now, um, trying to come up with a decent design that actually, you know, worked well. And this was the one I came up with. Uh, it's an eight-sided gear and pretty easy to build. Um, if I just construct it right now, you can see how it's really just a square and then you add on a few of these sloped blocks on the side and then you can make the kind of odd four corners this way and you add a half block onto this side to make them all the same kind of radius from the middle and you end up with a gear uh, like that. So meshing them together, um, only this gear on the left here is powered you can see the rotors are just uh, normal blocks distance away from each other and they mesh into each other pretty well. Uh, I was happy with the way that it worked. It didn't seem to trip itself up. So this is the uh, design that I was sticking with. And so I was just thinking, you know, what can we build using this that you can't make just using a normal rotor? Because normally gears are just used to transfer motion or like rotation between things while only needing you know one moving part to do it uh, so I put this one together and needed a couple of pistons to get the height and distance right uh, it, I mean it's kind of fun to watch it spin around but it, it doesn't really have an advantage over a normal rotor so kind of just a, a showpiece right there um, I also tried making kind of the outline of the gear, thinking that with the uh, nice nice collision models that are in the game now, uh, I could push the red part of the gear into the blue part, kind of like a, a key inside of a cog thing, and then maybe this would turn some kind of a door open. Um, but it was actually pretty difficult to get the, the settings for the braking torque right for the blue and red parts, so that the red would mesh inside and still be able to turn with the blue. Um, yeah, the system just didn't didn't really work super well, so kind of abandoned that one. Uh, I also tried to see if I could make a, a bigger gear with more teeth to kind of do some uh, like gear reduction kind of things, uh, maybe open up some more possibilities, but the, the shape just became a little bit too irregular. Um, it didn't you can see like the openings on this one all basically look the same which is why it works so well and this one just not working out very well and so the next idea I went to is okay instead of a circular gear how about we go to a kind of a linear gear track and you can rig up kind of four gears like this and then have them kind of roll like a wheel until they mesh in with the track, um, get some good friction there. So this idea, uh, just putting them together like this didn't work because the distance um, right here, it didn't mesh well with the track. So what I ended up doing was putting a piston in the middle of this so that I could control the length, kind of the distance between this set of gears and this set of gears. And so when I put that on the track and turned it on. They did mesh pretty well and it and it was moving forward as I wanted it to. And so that gave me the idea, um, what if we turn it vertically and I have the gears kind of hooking into a track and crawling straight up a wall like an elevator that way. And so the the cart couldn't be like this because ideally I would have one set of track on this side, one set of track on this side. So the cart would actually need to be set up like this in order to go up it without running into the other side. And so that was the, the next part of this kind of like thought, thought process. And we ended up with this guy, uh, just using a connector to keep these attached to each other because there's actually no connection point between the cart and the track. And so we can see if we disconnect and then turn this on, these gears mesh really nicely um, 
with this outside track. And then I can turn this off to stop it. I can reverse the direction. It goes back up the same speed, uh, which is really nice. And this track, actually, I found out that the thicker parts of this uh, two by one slope actually work much better for uh, meshing with the gears than the the thin parts like I had shown earlier. I think they kind of look like that. So this one looked really promising. I knew the idea was going to work. Um, I just started to notice that uh, when I increased the speed that the wheels were turning, since I was only using one piston here, um, this part acted like a subgrid, whereas this part didn't, and it was causing uh, an imbalance in torques. So this whole cart would go up like slightly slanted um, because the torques weren't the same on each side. So in order to solve that issue, um, instead of one piston, I used two rotors out here, and then I'm just using their displacement in order to adjust uh, the distance between these two gears. And so that keeps it symmetrical with the two rotors on that side. So then to further on uh, that system using the rotors instead of the piston, um, I came up with this one, just add a little platform on top, starting to get into the actual design of the elevator cart. And so if we just turn this guy on, he'll start moving. Um, you can see that you can stand on top of the elevator and really nothing weird happens. It goes up nice and straight. So overall just working really well. Um, so then we had to kind of start thinking about, you know, end game for how this is going to look. Um, obviously you need something to stop yourself from going right off the top and also at the bottom. Um, I needed to come up with some kind of cushioning mechanism so this thing didn't just slam into the ground every time. So moving on to the next part, um, I wanted to make the distance, I wanted to basically compact uh, the cart. So decrease the space between this wheel and this wheel, and also decrease the space between this wheel and this wheel. And so making it smaller, uh, I came up with this guy, uh, which is still a good length across to be used as an elevator, but it minimizes the space necessary. And then after building a shell around the whole thing, I ended up with uh, this guy. And you can see the, the gears kind of hiding between um, on the sides there. So I also created just kind of a simple control system uh, these two programmable blocks are just uh, decoration. But this one locks the connector underneath, so we can unlock that. And then this one reverses the direction that the gears turn, so it's either up or down. And then I have this simple um, just V on a rotor, which will show you which direction you'll be going. Um, so it reverses with the other rotors. So say I want to go up, and then I have this stop and go. So this will stop the gears and it will also um, move these two rails that also act as entrance ramps. So if I, right now it's, actually it would be locked. There we go. So if I stop it, the rails go down and they act as like something that you could run up onto the platform. And then when you want to go, they'll swing back up and become your basically guardrails so you can't fall off. But you can see I started to come up with a system, um, just some wheels on sus or suspension wheels in order to catch this thing as it came down uh, on top of the connector. And then uh, I tried out having these nice um, just armor slopes that mesh with the slope of the elevator uh, and when it comes down. So if I bring it back down here, it would kind of snuggle into this slope nicely but what it kept doing was damaging both sides the elevator and the base so i i kind of aban abandoned that part uh eventually so just furthering um the design 
I wanted to see how this would mesh with large grid. So it just happened to be that my elevator shaft was exactly as long as four uh, large blocks over here. And so I could surround them with large blocks on the outside. And then on the back side, I needed blast doors just because it needs a little bit of extra space. You can see that the elevator sticks out, you know, an inch further than the blast doors, but that made it so that you couldn't use normal blocks, uh, normal armor blocks on this point. But the blast doors looked nice behind it, so no problems there. Uh, I went with one entrance ramp instead of two because you're only gonna be entering from this side. And I changed the design a little bit with this little extra slope so that you could run right up onto it, uh, no problem. So now checking out how this one works, uh, we are going to go up and stop it at the next floor. So I'll change my direction around, and then when I press stop go, ramp comes up, uh, stays out of the way of the wall. And now that I'm here, I'll just press stop go again. I can go down the ramp, do whatever I need to do on this floor. And when I wanna come back, I just run back on, press stop go and keep going. And then at the top of this one, in order to keep it from basically running over the edge, uh, I've put some more wheel suspension. And these are just gonna run into the rails like so, keep the elevator where it's at. And then when I want it to go back down here at the bottom, um, I've gone with six wheel suspension and I've gotten rid of these slopes that were here. Um, so there's no more damage being caused. So you can see how these catch the card at the bottom. And I've also lined wheels on this part to avoid any damage from happening there. But we can still get this uh, connector connection so that we can lock it up, charge the battery that's inside of the, um, the elevator cart so that it can operate without being connected and also for copy paste purposes. If I wanted to lock this together, then I can copy and it will all move uh, as one object. And so the final little bit of um, work on this one was to add a remote control into there um, and an antenna and then adding a camera on this side. And what that is gonna allow me to do is call the elevator um, if I'm not on the same floor. So let's say I'm up here. I can see the elevator antenna is down there, so I know it's below me. So I can just go to my remote access network. Um, it's going to be this one because it's 18. So I'll take control. And then when I go to my camera, it's actually looking at the controls for this elevator. So you can see that buttons two, three, and four correspond to stop, go, up, down, and then lock and unlock the connector. So if I want it to come up to me, I'll just change the direction, pressing three, and then press stop, go, and then unlock, and it will come up to me. Um, so when it comes up to my level, I'll just press stop, go again, the ramp folds down, and now I've got the elevator uh, right in front of me can jump on and then we can keep going up so overall really happy with how uh, the system's turning out uh, it integrates with the large grid really well uh, I like how it operates I love the way that the gears mesh into uh, into the tracks like they do and if I just cut away at some of the externals right here, uh, it's more fun to look at how these things are all going around. Uh, really simple on the kind of the brains behind it, but I think it's far superior to wheels for an elevator of this type. And also um, the length of it is just dependent on how much track you have. You know, it's not like a stack of pistons where you have to put a bunch of pistons underneath this thing will keep going basically to infinity as long as it's got track to bite onto, which is uh, a really nice. You know, you could put this in basically any station, um, any 
any ship really that you wanted to. You just need enough space for basically the well at the bottom right here. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'll be posting this on the workshop soon and yeah, hope you guys enjoy this thing. I will catch you on the next one.